tanks and trucks may dominate the land, while boats patrol these seas. But what happens when you combine the two? It turns out, you get impressive, powerful vehicles with important tactical functions. Amphibious vehicles were key players in World War I and II and continue to form significant portions of modern-day forces. And on a smaller scale, modern-day city tours, but that's another video for another time. In this video, we'll be looking at the biggest, most intimidating amphibious military vehicles crossing between today's land and sea, from smallest to largest. BVS-10 We start off with the BVS-10. Weighing in at just 8.5 tons, this all-terrain armored vehicle is small compared to the other entries on this list. Yet, at that 8.5 tons, it's still no small potatoes. Made by British multinational conglomerate BAE Systems at their Swedish defense company branch, Land Systems Haglunds, the BVS-10 is in use by the forces of the UK, Sweden, Austria, France, the Netherlands, and Turkey. While it's similar to the popular BV, or Bandwagen 206, while it has been in production since 1974, the BVS-10 is larger, has a more powerful engine, and is fully amphibious. The BVS-10 can carry 12 passengers plus the driver, has a heavy machine gun loaded on its ring mount, has smoke grenade launchers and mortars for its secondary armament, and with its Cummins 5.9 liter 6-cylinder turbocharged 275 horsepower diesel engine, can travel at up to 40 miles per hour on land and a little over 3 miles per hour underwater. While that may not sound particularly fast, for multifunctional, heavy armored vehicles, the scale of speed changes. For this list, it's a little slow, but by no means very far off the average, as you'll see. M520 Goer Perhaps a slightly unusual entry for this list, the M520, or Goer, doesn't look at first glance like any of the typical amphibious vehicles, and that's because, in many ways, it wasn't. Whereas most military vehicles designed to be amphibious have specific features that seems to suggest a boat-like design, the Goer was more like a standard cargo truck with a very tight seal on the rear cargo bed tailgate and drop side doors. Made by American manufacturer Caterpillar, the Goer was produced from 1972 until 1976 and saw action in the Vietnam War, becoming a preferred resupply vehicle thanks to its ability to travel over terrain that other supply vehicles simply couldn't handle. Weighing 13.5 tons, Goers were equipped with a 192 horsepower 6-cylinder diesel engine. They could travel up to 31 miles per hour, but drivers were often reluctant to bring them up to top speed because of a tendency to bounce when driving on hard surfaces. That's one of the reasons that, while 1,300 units were made, by the late 1980s they had been replaced with the unfortunately not amphibious HEMTT. Additionally, because of a demilitarization order, the old M520s were partially destroyed before being sold for parts, so only a few intact goers remain in existence anywhere. BTR-80 Moving on, we come to an amphibious armored personal carrier from the Cold War era. Another older model, though this one has been more recently updated and remains very much in service. This Russian 8x8, 13.6-ton carrier was initially developed for the Soviet Army in 1985 and was first deployed in the Soviet-Afghan War. The original design included a 260-horsepower diesel engine with hydrojets for amphibious propulsion. The most recent version of this impressive vehicle, the BTR 82A, introduced in roughly 2009, retains its hydrojets but is now equipped with a 300 horsepower engine, fighter weaponry, and more advanced night vision tech, among other improvements. At last check, variations on the BTR 80 could carry a crew of three plus seven passengers and could travel up to 56 miles per hour on lands and 6.2 miles per hour swimming. Today, over 5,000 units have been produced of the various models, and the BTR-80 and its descendants are in use by over 30 military forces worldwide. VAB The VAB, or the Vehicule de l'Avant Blinde, Armored Vanguard Vehicle, in French, is a French-made amphibious armored personnel carrier. Designed by France's Renault Auto Manufacturers, the first VAB entered service in 1976, and they are still in service today. These 13.8-ton vehicles hold a two-person crew plus 10 passengers, are built in 4x4 and 6x6 models, and are typically fitted with machine guns as armaments. 
They can travel at 68 miles per hour on land and a little under 5 miles per hour in water, using some combination of their wheels and twin water jets for amphibious propulsion. VABs have been deployed just about anywhere the French infantry has gone since their introduction in the mid-70s, including Kuwait, Yugoslavia, and Afghanistan. Today, VABs are operated by about 15 different nations' armies, including Italy, France, Morocco, Ivory Coast, and the UAE. However, in France, they are nearing the end of their lifespan. It's expected that as soon as this year, France will begin actively seeking a VAB replacement. At present, Renault's upcoming Armored Multi-Role Carrier, or AMC, is believed to be a frontrunner for the replacement program. However, the AMC is still very much in development, so you can expect the VAB and its many variants to stick around at least another several years. Iveco Super AV Up next, we have the Iveco Super AV, an Italian 8x8 wheeled amphibious tactical vehicle. First brought into production for the Brazilian and then Italian armies in 2009 and 2010, it's one of the more modern models on this list. And, perhaps surprisingly, given the relative stature of Italy in the defense manufacturing world, is most notable for having been selected for the US Marine Corps' amphibious combat vehicle program. This means 537 Super AVs will, within the next two years, be replacing the Marines' AAV-7s. Built by Iveco, short for Industrial Vehicles Corporation, of Turin, the Super AV weighs between 15 and 24 tons, depending on the model, and is powered by an Oveco Cursor 136L turbocharged multi-fuel 560 horsepower diesel engine, which gives it a maximum land speed of 65 miles per hour and is fully amphibious, with a water speed of 6.2 miles per hour. It's a particularly hardy model of amphibious vehicle, capable of weathering even the open sea with slight waves, that is, up to Sea State 3. It also has a higher level of protection than other vehicles in its class, with a hardened steel hull that can withstand even landmines and IEDs. It requires one crew member and carries between 8 and 12 passengers. The model being built for the US Marines is a version developed by BAE Systems and is expected to be introduced in 2022 or 2023. Type 05 Amphibious Fighting Vehicle the only entry on this list from China, the Type 05 Armored Fighting Vehicle is actually the name given to a family of amphibious infantry fighting vehicles that have been made in China since 2006. Developed by Chinese state-owned defense corporation Norinco for the PLA, the Type 05 vehicle family includes a number of specialized models, but all feature the same basic hull design and propulsion. They make use of a planning hull and are propelled by two water jets when traveling on water. These amphibious tanks have six wheels on each side and most models also have a tank-like tread. They weigh in at 26.5 tons and take a crew of 3 or 4 plus up to 8 passengers. While they have a land speed of only 40 miles per hour, putting them at an average to slow land speed, these hulking amphibious vehicles are perhaps most notable for their seaworthiness and speed on water, being able to travel as much as a rumored 28 miles per hour on water. Even at the lower estimated speed listed by some publications, it could travel just over 17 miles per hour, putting it at roughly triple the water speed of most of the other vehicles we've looked at so far. In use at present by both the People's Liberation Army Marine Corps and the Venezuelan Marines, new and modified variants of the Type 05 have been continuing to appear, so we can expect to see this large amphibious vehicle in play for the foreseeable future. Tata Kestrel Coming a little farther west, we take a look at the Tata Kestrel, a relatively new model of wheeled amphibious armored personnel carrier developed by Mumbai's Tata Motors and the development of India's Defense Research and Development Organization. Introduced to service in just 2017, it benefits from more modern technology and is better designed for modern warfare than the older models largely in use by other world powers. Powered by a 600 horsepower diesel engine, it can travel at 62 miles per hour on the land and, thanks to a pair of water jets, 6.2 miles per hour in water, despite its 27.6 ton heft. It comes equipped with an automatic cannon and a secondary armament of a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun. It carries a crew of at least 2 and up to 12 passengers, depending on configuration. The Kestrel was built specifically to replace the Indian Army's aging fleet of Soviet amphibious vehicles and is designed with crew survivability in mind, with improved blast protection features and an additional armor kit available for zones with heavier firing. 
M3 Amphibious Rig. Next, we come to an unusual but worthy entry. Rather than a tactical or attack vehicle, this next amphibious vehicle is, in essence, a large mobile bridge. First entering service in 1994 and still in use today, the M3 was developed by Eisenwerk Kaiserslautern or EWK of Germany. Weighing approximately 28 tons, they travel by road to where they're needed, then afford water to allow non-amphibious vehicles to cross. It runs as a 4x4 vehicle on land, drives into the water, and unfolds to roughly 42.5 feet by 21.5 feet with around 13 feet of height. It can then function as either a bridge or ferry, carrying cargo and personnel across the water. And to make it even more useful, it can connect to other M3s using ramps to forward more challenging waterways or carry a larger load. And intriguingly, despite its large size and gentle purpose, it uses its 400 horsepower engine to travel up to 50 miles per hour on land and 8.7 miles per hour in water. The M3 has primarily seen action in Iraq, but is in use today by the armies of Germany, the United Kingdom, Indonesia, Taiwan, Singapore, and Brazil. San Antonio Class Amphibious Transport Dock As we move into the final leg of this list, we turn our attention to craft that are amphibious by name but work slightly differently, with land travel a lower priority but still a necessity for their function. We're talking about amphibious assault ships and transport docks. And, by extension, there are many amphibious cousins like helicopter landing docks that carry amphibious assault teams to shore. These ships are used as landing spots for airborne forces and are used to land and provide support to ground teams. They don't typically actually travel on land the way the other vehicles we've examined do, but are rather built to be able to run close to shore rather than anchor further out to sea like other large ships. And, of course, to be able to free themselves again once landed on beaches, no getting out of the vehicle and pushing required. Some are supported by landing craft, like the American LCAC, or landing craft air cushion, while others are capable of shore-to-shore -shore transport. There are a vast many makes and models of amphibious ships in this vein, but for the purposes of this video, we'll take a closer look at San Antonio Class Amphibious Transport Dock, which is a US Navy warship capable of launching and supporting landing forces. While, at first glance, this will seem to be perhaps the most modern model of amphibious ship on this list, its history has been marred with problems, though additional ships in the class continue to be produced. The San Antonio class of vessels, of which 11 currently exist, were intended to be networked, highly survivable, and built to fit with new technologies as they arise. However, in practice, the first in class was found in 2010 to be capable of operating in a benign environment, but not effective, suitable, and not survivable in a combat situation. The most recent model, the USS Portland, was commissioned into service in 2018 and primarily functions as a testing operator for the US Navy's new LAWS, Laser Weapon System so at least they're being put to use, if not seeing combat. The ship has a huge 25,000 tons full displacement, can travel at 22 knots, roughly 25 miles per hour, and can hold up to 800 crewmen on board, as well as two LCACs or one landing craft utility, LCU. America-class amphibious assault ships. Last, but certainly not least, we come to the America-class amphibious assault ships. This is a new class of which one ship, the USS America, is in service to date, while the next in the family, the USS Tripoli, is still undergoing trials. The America and Tripoli are actually considered a dead-end model, as their design was so focused on improving the services the ship offered to aviation teams, they seem to have plum forgot to include a well deck. The defining feature of an amphibious warship and the aspect that allows them to launch amphibious teams. The third ship in the class, the USS Bougainville, will, however, have its well deck restored. As such, we'll take a closer look at the Bougainville. The Bougainville will be an improvement in many ways, having a stronger deck to better withstand the force of the F-35B's takeoff and the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar EASR, volume air search radar in use on the US's latest aircraft carriers. The Bourgainville will have an unbelievable full load displacement of 45,693 tons, a marked departure from the sizes of the other vessels we've been able to examine to date, even doubling the size of the amphibious transport dock, and will be able to travel at roughly 25 miles per hour at sea with its robust propulsion system. 
It will also be armed with a number of missile launchers and will be able to carry over 2,000 aboard. And with its return well deck, will hold two LCACs or one landing craft utility to support amphibious missions, earning its name. And there you have it. Those are the 10 most massive amphibious military vehicles in the world today. These large, powerful crafts would be impressive enough traveling just on land or in the water, but what makes them special is their ability to do both. What do you think? Are you intrigued by the newer models, or do you prefer classic amphibious vehicles like the Ducks and LVTs of the 20th century? Sound off in the comments, and don't forget to give this video a like to let us know that you enjoy this content. Want to keep up with modern military content like this? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell to make sure you never miss a video like this one. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.